Welcome to the Mueller Video Guide to Constructing Your New Value Plus Steel Building. This presentation is designed to give you a visual overview of how you should prepare for your build, how the basic components of your building should be assembled, the order in which you should put them together, and a few tips here and there to help you make the process a safe and rewarding one. For your specific structure, please consult its specifications and engineered drawings for instructions. Before proceeding with your Mueller building project, be sure to check with your local zoning office for any restrictions or permitting requirements for the construction process. We suggest you watch the video the first time to get a feeling for how your building should be assembled. This video is intended to be a general guide. For erection of your Mueller building, reference drawings specific to your building. QR codes have been added for many of the building steps for your convenience. In the case of any discrepancies between construction and engineering drawings, the engineering drawings will take precedence. Before we get into the assembly of the building itself, we want to emphasize one word, safety. Before erection can begin, the foundation must be properly cured. Consult your concrete professional regarding any foundation questions. During the assembly of your building, you'll be working with heavy steel components, which will be hanging in the air. Hard hats, gloves, steel-toed footwear, and safety glasses are a must on your job site. Everyone on the job should be reminded to be alert as to what is going on around them at all times. Erectors are cautioned not to alter any of the primary structural components, such as the frame columns or rafters, unless otherwise specified in the drawings. Any alteration of these members may affect the structural stability of your finished building and void the engineering warranty. A representative of Mueller must be consulted prior to making alterations of any structural components not specified in the drawings. Do not install any material if its quality is in question. Please contact your Mueller sales representative immediately with any quality concerns. Mueller Inc. will not be responsible for the installation or removal costs of any material that is visibly defective or non-conforming. Stay clear of loads being moved by any lifting device. Hands and feet should be kept clear of moving loads. Never stand under material being lifted. During construction, take precautions to secure the structure during assembly. Temporary bracing may be required to stabilize the structure during erection. Never leave the structure unbraced. As with any project, having the appropriate tools will make the process move along much easier. Here's a list of tools that will be helpful during the construction of your building. Additional tools may be required depending upon the specific requirements of your building. Before the components for your new Mueller Value Plus steel building arrive, the site and foundation should be prepared. This includes the leveling of the terrain and construction of the foundation. Mueller buildings are typically designed to be placed on a permanent concrete slab. We highly recommend customers hire a competent contractor to complete the foundation construction. Mueller will provide a building layout plan that shows dimensions and sheeting ledge. It is important that the foundation is constructed both square and level. Pay close attention to any elevation changes in your building layout plan. If you have any questions, Contact your Mueller representative before construction of the foundation begins. A final check should be made after the completion of the concrete work and prior to steel erection. This will allow any necessary corrections to be made before erection begins. Due to the length and height of the vehicle transporting your building components, Access to the building site from the adjacent highway, road, or street must be considered. Such access should be studied and prepared in advance of arrival. 
all obstructions, overhead and otherwise, must be removed and the access route prepared if the soil will not sustain heavy wheel loads. Extra care should always be exercised in the unloading operation to prevent injuries from handling the steel, as well as to prevent damage to materials and the foundation. Before the truck leaves, check to make sure all the parts have been delivered. Check each bundle tag against the delivery receipt. Each bundle tag is marked for identification. Sign the delivery receipt if all parts have been delivered. If any parts are missing or damaged, notify the driver and note the missing items on the delivery receipt before signing. Check with your sales representative regarding any missing or damaged parts. These procedures are for your protection. A shortage discovered later can be caused by theft, misplacement, or other causes of which Mueller cannot accept responsibility. Prior to erecting any steel, it's important to first confirm the dimensions of your slab. You will need to check that your width and length match your building layout plan. Once this is complete, perform a cross measurement to ensure that your slab is square. If any issues are found, make sure to take them into account when marking anchor bolt locations. Referencing your plans, you'll need to mark the location of your column anchor bolts. Framed opening anchor bolts will not be drilled or marked at this time. Paying attention to anchor bolt size, drill at marked anchor bolt locations. This can be done for each column all at once or as your build progresses. When drilling is complete, remove dust from inside and around the holes using compressed air. Referencing your drawings, locate columns, column anchor brackets, and haunch brackets. When installing column anchor brackets, pay close attention to which side of the column the bracket attaches to, as conditions may vary. Haunch brackets should be installed to the flat side of the column. Care should be taken that columns are oriented correctly when installing haunch brackets. Note, for double-framed buildings, refer to the drawings for bracket details as double-frame buildings' details will vary. Begin standing your columns for the bay that you will first be erecting. Columns will be secured to the foundation of the building using appropriately sized screw-in anchor bolt. It's not vital to have columns stand and remain level at this time, as this will be addressed later in the build. However, it is important that columns do not remain unbraced during the erection process. Damage to materials and injury can occur if columns are not properly braced and fall. Note. On any building consisting of more than two bays, Mueller suggests fully framing an interior bay and expanding outward. After the columns are in place, locate sidewall girts specific to each location. When installing sidewall girts, care should be taken to ensure that girts are installed in the correct orientation. Note. The legs on a wall girt are a different size to make nested connections easier and outside legs should always point up. Also, not all holes will receive a bolt. Bolts are not to be installed in outside flanges of overlapping girts. Refer to your drawings. On buildings with moment frames, be sure to install moment frames before sidewall girt installation in that bay. Bolts that have been tightened during this step may need to be temporarily loosened when squaring and leveling the building. Prior to installing knee and apex braces, you'll need to cope out the flanges of the braces so that they install in line with the frame. Using your drawings, locate all knee and apex braces and lay them out on sawhorses. Use the pre-punched holes in flange as a guide to mark your cut line. This detail is shown in your drawings. Make sure to secure the part and wear protective gear before you begin coping. Referencing your drawings, locate rafters and apex brackets. Install apex bracket on the peak side of one rafter in each frame line. Ensure that the rafter is oriented correctly. Lifting haunch side of rafter, attach rafter to haunch bracket with one bolt in the lower outermost hole. This will leave the peak end resting on the concrete. Follow these same steps on the other rafter in this frame line. With each rafter now secured at the haunch with one bolt, raise both peak ends of rafters up and fully connect them to the apex bracket. Install the remaining bolts in the haunch bracket connection. 
bolt knee and apex braces into place. It's important to not leave frame lines unbraced. These can be secured with chains, straps, or roof purlin. Note, for double frame buildings, refer to the drawings for brace and bracket details. While this installation procedure is what is shown, some buildings may require rafters, apex brackets, and apex braces to be built on the ground and be lifted into place. Referencing your drawings, locate the end wall support columns. Attach end wall support columns to end wall rafter using the appropriate method. This can be either a bolted or screwed connection depending on your building. Refer to drawings for your specific method. For end wall support columns not attaching in the center of the end wall frame, this is a bolted connection. For an end wall support column attaching to the center end wall apex bracket, this is a screwed connection. Prior to installation of a center end wall column, ensure that your outermost columns are level. If columns are not level, this can affect the final height of your roof peak if this is not addressed before end wall column installation. As shown in your drawings, locate the end wall girts and appropriate clips. With the end wall girts, you will use both a screwed and bolted connection. Where the end wall girt connects to the outer column, this is a screwed connection. For this connection, you will attach the clip to the column flange and attach your end wall girt to the clip using screws. Use clamps to hold the clip tight against the column and girt during screw installation process. It may also be helpful to pre-drill the screw holes. Where it applies, the end wall girt to the end wall support column is a bolted connection. For ease of installation, it's recommended to make bolted connections before screwed connections. Locate roof purlin specific to each location. When installing purlin, care should be taken to ensure they are installed in the correct orientation. The legs on a purlin are a different size to make the nested connections easier. The leg that attaches to the rafter will alternate at each bay. The top leg of the purlin will always point upslope. Also, not all holes will receive a bolt. Bolts are not to be installed in outside flanges of overlapping purlin. Refer to your drawings. Referencing your drawings, locate your eave purlin brackets. These will be shipped connected with perforations and need to be separated on site. Bolt brackets to columns in appropriate locations. This can be done before or after columns have been erected. Having located the eave purlin, begin to attach eave purlin to eave purlin brackets, securing temporarily with clamps. Eave purlin attaches to brackets with pancake head screws. Eave purlin connection details can vary based on building design. Reference drawings for your building's connection details. Locating jams and appropriate clips, lay out and install clips to jam. To prepare your building for jam installation, hold jam to the underside of your wall girt, aligning clip to pre-punched wall girt holes. Mark and bend stiffener lip to wall girt to allow jam to install flush with your girt. Using a level and clamp, secure jam clip wall girt and level the jam in order to mark the base for anchor bolt connections. Remove jam to drill anchor bolt holes into concrete. Clear the dust from in and around the holes. Install jam, attaching it wall girt and foundation. For a wall girt connecting to a framed opening jam, this is a screwed connection. This clip will attach directly to the stiffener lips of the jam as shown. Your wall girt will then attach to the clip. Depending on building design, your drawings may require clip to attach to web of jam, view plans and details. For header and or sill connections, or in the event of a wind-rated roll-up door, additional framing may be required. See plans. Once the structure of the building has been assembled, install the base angle around the edge of the slab. It is suggested that a hammer drill be used to drill holes the appropriate size in the slab at 36 inch intervals. Use drive pins to attach the base angle to the slab. Rake angle can now be installed on top of the purlins at the end wall as shown in the drawings. Corner angles can be installed vertically at each outside corner of the building as shown in the drawings. 
Certain buildings may require additional detail framing, such as buildings with gable extensions, overhangs, lean-tos, etc. Review your building's complete drawings package for full details. Upon completion of secondary framing, ensure the frame is plumb and square. It may be necessary to temporarily loosen certain connections during the squaring process. Once level and square, all bolted connections should be tightened. Even those connections previously tightened should be checked, as they often will loosen while the frame is pulled and pushed to completion. Some buildings require permanent bracing to be installed. This provides support for wind loads or other longitudinal loads. The erector should review this requirement. On some smaller buildings, diagonal bracing is not needed for the building design, so the erector must furnish any temporary bracing needed. Check building plans to see the specific bracing requirements for your project. If required, the X bracing is metal strapping. It should always be installed as shown on the drawings that came with your building and should be properly tensioned. Note, additional bracing types may be required. Refer to plans for additional information. Congratulations on the purchase of your Mueller Value Plus building. We're confident your building will provide years of service and satisfaction. Feel free to call us at 877-2-MUELLER. Visit us on our website at MuellerInc.com or come by one of our many locations across the South and Southwestern United States.